Hola, yo soy Hugo Bravo, estás en Doxal.com y esta vez tenemos con nosotros a Michael Chicasio. Hola, hello, Michael. Hello, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. It was a very pleasure having you here. We have learned a lot from you, but can you tell us a little bit about your background, please? Sure. Uh, currently, I'm the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants President. I'm the president of the board. Uh, I also own Complete Canines, which is in Mystic, Connecticut. That is a, I see only aggression cases right now, and I go to people's homes and, and work with their aggressive dogs. Um, and I also teach a couple courses online. I have one through the Dog Trainers Connection, how to take aggression cases, A to Z, and uh, a mentorship through the IAABC. Okay, so we know that you are an expert in dog aggression, and that's why you come here to talk, of us, to talk, about, to talk us about that. Uh, Um, yeah, so the, a lot of people think I'm a, a specialist in aggression, but I do like to work with aggression, aggression cases and also educate others on how to safely work with aggressive dogs um, and how to modify the behavior. I don't think there's enough information out there uh, in terms of safely working also. So I like to teach other trainers and work with other trainers uh, on that topic for sure. Okay, and when we are working with dogs, and usually when we want to work with uh, aggressive, aggressive dogs, uh, we use to use some tools like show collars, prong collars, electric collars, and uh, which kind of tools have you used, and uh, which tools do you justify to use or not to use? Okay, so. It's important to define what tools uh, means, the term tools, and that can be uh, different types of collars or other equipment that controls the dog's movements. Um, there's other types that can reinforce behavior like food or toys or even distance. That can be what I consider a tool that we're using to change the dog's behavior. Um, and the tools I choose, I choose that are working through positive reinforcement. And the reason why is I want to ensure I'm creating a positive association with whatever the dog is currently acting aggressively towards. Oftentimes the dog is fearful or anxious or insecure about whatever it is that they are um, barking or lunging or growling towards. And if we use positive reinforcement, we don't get the negative side effects or the fallout of when you use something like a choke chain or a prong collar or anything that's introducing what's called an aversive stimulus. At the same time, the thing that a dog is barking or lunging or growling at appears. So it happens a lot in the United States with the invisible fence systems. The mailman comes by, the dog runs to go see the mailman and gets the shock from the collar. First day, they don't maybe make the association. Then the next day, the mailman comes and the dog runs to the fence line and gets shocked by the collar. Third, by the third, fourth, sometimes fifth time, oftentimes the, the dog will be, oh, there comes that bad mailman again, and I'll have to do something about it. And they may even charge through the fence line, right past the shock, and still bite the mailman. So that's the issue with um, aversive tools, is you can have that negative association. But how do you explain that if I have an aggressive dog and I want him to stop doing that, uh, not using a uh, show collar? Mm -hmm. So we, we can always work with the dog where they're just before they're going to give you that aggressive behavior. So there's always time before the aggressive behavior if you can control the environment correctly. So when you're practicing and you're teaching the dog what to do instead when they see the mailman, Um, you can work on reinforcing that behavior so you don't need to punish the undesirable behavior. In fact, if you reinforce the desirable behavior enough of, oh, there's the mailman and I just stand here and watch that, the dog will start to choose what pays off better for them or what's more reinforcing. That's just animal behavior. The animal, human, dog, cat, dolphin is going to choose the better thing. So if it's chasing the mailman away or the treats that you're using, they're going to choose whatever's more reinforcing and whatever behaviors pays off best. So um, it's, the, it's like you have a $5 bill here and a $100 bill here. And I say, I want you to just stand up and then choose you know, what your reinforcer is. The $100 bill is what most, most people are going to choose. So. Of course. And uh, <coughs> we are talking, we talk about tools and uh, We can justify some tools as muscles to work with aggressive dogs. 
uh, in which point because some people think that if a dog has a muscle is mistreat so how can we understand mistreat to a dog how can it identify when we are mistreating a dog or we are working with them to make it better um, a lot is in the body language when you start to understand what looks like stress what is communicated as stress or discomfort or fear in a dog catching those signals then you know what affect the tool or the procedure is that you're, you're using with the dog so if I'm use, even when I'm using treats I may think I'm doing something good but if I'm bringing the dog too close to the scary thing I may be misusing that tool so it's possible to misuse treats and on the same side if I use a prong collar and I'm um, really yanking very hard on it and the dog is very much uh, reacting to it in a painful way, I'm misusing that tool and I'm not reading the body language correctly. So the dog is always going to tell us what works is working for them, how they feel about the tool. Okay, and you came to talk about defensive, uh, safe defensive handling on aggressive dogs. Uh, what do we understand as uh, defensive uh, handling? Defensive handling is how you move and work with the dog to prevent yourself from getting injured and prevent others from getting injured. So how you hold the leash, how you move with the dog, how you talk to the dog, how you everything that you're doing and interacting with, including with the leash, is all defensive handling. We're being proactive or being planning ahead before something bad happens. And that's what defensive handling is. It means if the dog tries to bite, we're going to be ready for it because we planned ahead of time. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming to Mexico. Eh, vamos a, a seguir con otras algunas otras entrevistas. Yo soy Hugo Bravo. Esto es en Doxal.com. Thank you very much. You're welcome.